friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I'm so excited today to be doing the middle grade book tag. Amanda from The Curly Reader created this tag this month and I'm so thrilled to do it. I'm so thrilled that she did it during the month of March. Katie and I had thrown out the idea of doing a middle grade book tag and just never got around to it. So thanks, Amanda. You're awesome. I will be tagging a bunch of people at the end of this, but let's just talk more middle grade books. Many of these you might have heard me talk about this month already. Sorry, I just have a lot of favorites and there's some good questions here. So let's just jump right in. Number one is what is the last middle grade book that you've read? I'm currently in the middle of a couple, but the last one that I completed is Esperanza Rising by Pam Munoz Ryan. I have decided I love Pam Munoz, Munoz Ryan. I can't have a tongue twister time saying that one. Um, this one is about a Mexican family that immigrates to the United States. Basically, this is about Esperanza learning about how spoiled she kind of was at the beginning and she learns how to work and learns the value of friendship and family and found family and hard work and it's just such a good picture of what an immigrant's life might be like. I think Pam Munoz Ryan does a really good job of helping kids and adults, myself included, see into the eyes of other people and what their lives might have been like. I think that this was a lovely story. I'm really glad that I read it. The second question is, what is a middle grade book that was read to you as a child? I know my parents read to my, my siblings and I a lot when we were little. Um, so I had a hard time thinking of one specific one, but I know that the Narnia series is one that I have heard over and over and over and I've read it multiple times even as an adult. But I know that this is one that my family, my parents read to me as a child. This is the first one in publication order, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and probably was my favorite when I was when I was little. This is by C.S. Lewis and it takes place in this world called Narnia. And in this one we follow four siblings who walk through a, a wardrobe one day and, and land in Narnia and their adventures in Narnia. And I really loved it and thanks mom and dad to reading, from, reading to me all the time when I was a kid. <laughs> Number three is what was your favorite middle grade book as a child? And I actually have two books that I still own that were my books when I was a kid, um, but then I found two others on my shelves that I also loved. I had this box set and I don't have the other two. I'm, I don't know where my copy of Charlotte's Web is. I feel like I do have one, but it's the E.B. White box set that included Charlotte's Web, Stuart Little, and Trumpet of the Swan. And I didn't care for Trumpet of the Swan as much, but I read Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little over and over and over and over when I was a kid. And Charlotte's Web is actually the first book that ever made me cry. Now I cry all the time in books. <laughs> I also was a huge Beverly Cleary fan when I was little. So I just pulled off Ramona Quimby. I do have a whole stack of her books. I remember going to the library and just bringing so many of these home because I could read through them pretty quickly and I've reread Beverly Cleary books many times when I was younger. But two that stand out as favorites, um, one when I was younger, is The Twits by Roald Dahl. I was a big Roald Dahl fan and The Twits just tickled my funny bone when I was little. My brother and I both absolutely loved this book. This was, um, this is my book from when I was little. There's my little signature in there and it's so beat up and well loved and it, ridiculous humor in here, kind of dark humor, but I absolutely loved this one when I was younger. And then as I got older, but still a child, I loved Anne of Green Gables and I received this when I was in middle school I think this series came out in the 80s this edition and this is a very well-loved copy of Anne of Green Gables and it's a it's a forever favorite for sure but definitely was a favorite when I was younger as well the next question is what is your favorite middle grade as an adult <laughs> and that's really hard to pick I didn't pull one out let me see so here on this shelf I kind of put some of my favorites so let me just tell you what I've put on this shelf so we have Wonder by R.J. Palacio, Sweep by Jonathan Oxier, The Girl Who Drank the Moon, The One and Only Ivan, Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech, Nevermore and Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend, The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley, Vanderbeekers of 141st Street, Pages and Co. by Anna James, and A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I'm not going to pull all of them out because I feel like I've talked about a lot of favorites in the last couple weeks. <laughs> But um, a lot of those are favorites, definite favorites from the last couple years. Actually, all of them are favorites since starting BookTube. I think always as an adult, 
a favorite is, is always going to be Anne of Green Gables. That's a never changing favorite as well as the Narnia series. I've revisited them many times. But yeah, this pile here is kind of like my my babies, my lovelies. <laughs> Definitely some favorites on that shelf. Well, all of them are favorites. Um, and I'm going to talk about a couple more, but I pulled them off for different reasons. So I'll tell you those in a moment. Who is a favorite middle grade author? Again, I could always come back to Ella Montgomery, but I'm going to also say Kate DiCamillo. I've been talking about her a lot lately. I don't own all of her books yet. I have Floor and Ulysses in the other room because I'm reading that now. Ramey Nightingale is the first in the Three Rancheros series. I don't yet own the second two books, Louisiana, Louisiana's Way Home and Beverly Right Here. Loved that series, finished that series this year. I also have read... Um, the Magician's Nephew and The Tiger Rising. Oh, all my other ones are in the other room. The Tale of Despero and Because of Winn-Dixie, I'm hoping to reread this month. And also uh, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. She's an author that I've read just about everything she's written and I will continue to read just about everything she's written. Another author that I have discovered in the last couple years, a middle grade author um, that I absolutely love is Catherine Applegate. Uh, I think I read One and Only Ivan first. And I believe she's coming out with a new one this year, the one and only Bob, maybe something about Bob and Wish Tree, which is such a lovely story. Catherine Applegate also wrote Crenshaw and Endling, I think. So I have a few of hers I still need to read, um, but she's definitely an author that I keep my eye on when she comes out with new stuff because I just love I love the way that she writes as well. Number six is what middle grade book do you think should be required reading in schools? I've seen both Katie and Amanda's video of this already and they both said Wonder by RJ Palacio, which is a fantastic pick. I wanted to think of some other books because that one has already been mentioned in this book tag. So I thought about a nonfiction that I thought might be interesting, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kumquaba and Brian Mueller. This is about a young boy named William who creates and builds a windmill to provide electricity for irrigation for his village and kind of saves his village ultimately. And he does that because he reads books. So I feel like this book really uh, highlights the importance of educating yourself and why science and why we learn things and why that can be helpful and how it has been practically helpful for this whole village, how inspiring that might be to some kids. Um, so I feel like this is a, a good book to learn about another culture, to learn about perseverance, to learn about education and the importance of it and ingenuity and um, you being creative and imaginative, but also using the things that we've learned um, to help encourage that imagination and ingenuity. So uh, I just think that this one might be a good one to read in schools. And then also I, uh, for another fiction book that I don't know if this is read in schools, but I love this book, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Kate DiCamillo. In this one, we follow a China doll rabbit named Edward Tulane, who at the beginning is very vain and arrogant, and he's deeply loved by his human, <laughs> his little girl. And But he doesn't really accept that love. He feels like he should be in a fancier home and he should be treated a little differently. Um, but one day on this journey, he gets lost and separated from his family and ends up going on this miraculous journey where he grows and changes and learns to be kind and accept other people and accept love and give love and... I just love the the arc of this little bunny, Edward Tulane. I think it's written in a way that's very approachable for children, but also has a lot of humorous moments and tender moments, but just again teaches about acceptance and love and friendship and kindness and all of those things which are so important for children to hear stories about and to see because we need more of that in our world. So yeah, I definitely think Edward Tulane would be a good one for schools. And the next question is, what is your favorite middle grade cover? <laughs> I can't just pick one, but I did kind of go with a theme. So I love trees. And so all the books that I chose with gorgeous covers all have trees of some sort on them. And I just, I love them. So Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan has all of these silhouettes of trees. And it also has some music notes on there, which I just saw. Um, which I just absolutely love. And guys, how did I not notice that this was a harmonica and that this is a harmonica? Tia, I think from Tia and all the books, put that on her Instagram recently and I was like, what? <laughs> how did I never notice that before? Because a harmonica plays a big role in this story. 
for some reason I just never looked closely enough at this cover and the spine but yeah I think this is a gorgeous cover Wish Tree again by Catherine Applegate has this big gorgeous oak tree on it and I love that cover and if you look closely there's also some animals that play a little role in this story I like this one The Great Unexpected by Sharon Creech I've not read this one yet but I love this kind of symmetrical not symmetrical but this big tree in the middle of this one plays a part with the kids almost in silhouette not quite full silhouette, but I just think that that's beautiful. And then a little bit of a more abstract one. This one really speaks to other covers that I have loved in the past. If you've seen me highlight other covers, I love this kind of filled in, um, almost like a doodle <laughs> uh, type of cover. I really love this style of cover. And I talked about this one in my Newbery Honor, my Newbery video recently, but yeah, I just think that that's a beautiful cover. And finally, uh, what is your favorite middle grade book to screen adaptation? Oh golly, I didn't pick one. There's so many. This is one of our challenges this year for middle grade March and there's really the sky's the limit because there just are so many adaptations. I really would love to see a new Secret Garden adaptation. I think they're coming out with one. Have I heard that? I mean, one of my all time favorites always is the Anne of, Anne of Green Gables adaptation. I did just recently, well just last night, maybe I'll just talk about that one. Last night I watched Hugo, which is an adaptation of The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick, and this movie was fantastic. It was quirky and the music was fantastic. It almost had a steampunk vibe to it, which makes sense because it takes place in a train station. Uh, Hugo Cabret is a little clock worker, clock maker not a maker he fixes the clocks in the train station so it had the gears and the winding of mechanical toys and old movies and it just was so well done and very closely connected to the book there were a few changes but nothing that was drastic so yeah I'll talk about that one Hugo <laughs> which is an adaptation of the invention of Hugo Cabret that is my current favorite middle grade book to screen adaptation that is it for the questions. I'm gonna tag quite a few people. So Mary at Happily Ever Esh, Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly, Karen from Rather Be Reading, Phoebe from Somebody Reads, Angie at Literary Labors, Tia at Tia and All the Books, and Doris from Aldi Books. I tag you guys to talk about some of your favorite middle grade reads, both from when you were a kid and recently. I hope that you do this tag. And of course, anybody else, if you're participating in Middle Grade March, I tag you to do this. Feel free to do this tag and share the middle grade love throughout the month and beyond. <laughs> Uh, but I hope that you enjoyed this tag. I would love to hear from you. What do you think would be a, a middle grade book that should be read in schools? That, is a, that was probably the hardest one for me to answer. So I would love to hear from you in the comments below about that or anything else that you want to talk about. You guys know I love talking with you down in the comments. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope that you're reading a great book and I will be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye.